We got pictures sitting on the window shield. That was a monkey. Yeah, that was a monkey. Just you casually. Liked that. You would've liked that, though. Yes. Hands down, see, you would've been the first one out there. Talking about, come on. Come on. That's my little animal. Yeah. You know, that's my favorite animal. What's good, y'all? It's the Duma Shets React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today, we're back with another American reaction. Mm -hmm. Super excited about this video. If you're new to us, and, and we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 200K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. First off, a few side notes for those of you that know nothing about Equatorial Guinea, and if you didn't watch the Equatorial Guinea episode, the country is one of the most unique places in the world. For one, as a former Spanish colony and one of the only few in Africa, it is the only Spanish-speaking country in Africa, and quite frankly, the Spanish they speak here, in my opinion, is very clean, clear, and comprehensible. I've had more difficulty understanding Mexicans, and I was taught the Mexican dialect in school. Second, mm. the country has been ruled by President Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbasogo since 1979, when he overthrew his uncle the former president in a coup. That means to this day he is the longest serving president in the world. The opinion of the wow. president is interesting. You will see his picture everywhere on streets, billboards, and people even wear shirts with his picture on it. Most outsiders might look at this as a harsh dictatorship. However, if you talk to the people and ask them, the general consensus is as long as he develops our nation and doesn't piss us off, we can live with his rulership. Plus, we're kind of used to it by now. It's complicated, whatever. And here's the other thing. Oh. Getting into Equatorial Guinea hasn't always been historically easy for most people outside of the continent. See, in recent years, post-pandemic, Equatorial Guinea actually took the title of Africa's least visited country, with an estimated number around only 6,000 non-ECAS union foreigners entering annually. This is due to a number of factors, such as strict visa restrictions that require lots of paperwork and time. In addition, for the longest time, the country has had a very closed-off political system that can change policies on a whim, so sometimes you can never even be sure, even if you have all your documents in order. Luckily, MTP is one of those organizations that has the hookup. And by that I mean, literally, they had friends tied into the government, so literally everyone that signed up for the summit was directly vouched. And when the government vouches you, it's gonna be a treat. See, despite having a super small population of less than 2 million people, the country usually ranks in the top 10 oil and hydrocarbon producing nations in all of Africa. And this is partially thanks to the fact that they have a weird sovereign layout. See, Equatorial Guinea is split into two parts. The insular region, or the islands in the Gulf of Guinea, made up of Bioko and Anabon, and the mainland part on continental Africa, known as Rio Muni. Despite being disconnected as an island and 13 times smaller than Rio Muni, about 80% of the population lives on Bioko. Island, which holds mm. the capital, for now, of Malabo. This is the part where most foreigners visit when they say they've been to Equatorial Guinea. Otherwise, very, very few venture off to the mainland, or even more rare, Anabon Island. One reason Bioko is so important? Well, the EEZ surrounding it is rich in oil and gas fields within the designated blocks, specifically the largest one, the Alba field, just north of Malabo. This means Bioko is essentially the moneymaker of the country. It's where most of the commerce, trade, and shipping goes through as well. In later years, though, so this was kind of seen as like a slight issue because while small Bioko was thriving, the mainland was just kind of sitting there waiting to develop. And this is where things get interesting. In 2011, it was announced that the country would construct a new capital on the mainland in the town of Oyala, later named Ciudad de la Paz, or the City of Peace. And in 2017, they formed a new province named Jibloho, specifically just for the capital area. To access all of this, they built a whole new international airport, named after the president, in the middle of the jungle, about 22 miles, 36 kilometers to the the east. The if you jungle. zoom in on the map, you can see the progress of development with large leveled plots of land ready for building new commercial and residential districts. And if you zoom out, you can see the numerous new highways that have been paved and built connecting the coast at Bata to virtually every other corner of the country. So as you can clearly see, much of this was done with the intention to incentivize citizens to get off Bioko and move mm. to the mainland, you know, to populate it and cultivate the wide swaths of unused land that they now have access to. And I was among one of the first few foreigners allowed to come in, see it, and document it. Wow. Okay. Let's go. A vlog with geography now. First time in history for over here. <laughs> come on, man. Crazy views. Here we go. Malibu. 
This is Malabo International. It is empty. Nothing is open. All the seats are empty. Whew. Yo, we pretty good in the vlog today. Okay, we got some views. Got some nice anchor. Just sitting on the window shield. That was a monkey. Yeah, that was a monkey. Just you'd have liked that. You'd have liked that though. Yes. Hands down, see, you would have been the first one out there talking about. Come on, come on. That's my little animal. Yeah. You know, that's my favorite animal. So do y'all like when y'all feed them? Do they keep coming back? Yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> they all trying to go home with you. I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Okay. Go back. Go they back, had the go hair. Back. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see that part. Hold on. Okay, what? I like that. What? Who that's supposed to be? Representation. Okay, that's a woman. And a man. She got bang two knots. That is fire. All right. That is fire. I love it. I could definitely see it like a little size in my home like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all know when we come to the motherland, we taking back some art. Oh, yeah. Yes, we are. I like that right now. <laughs> Okay. That not uh, that girl did not look like Regina Carter to you. You think? Go back. That girl looked. As, I was trying to read the subtitles. I was trying to hear it too, but then I looked up and I had to be like, hold on. <laughs> bro, you can't. Uh, a little. Bro, y'all can't tell me she don't. A little. She's older. Yeah, I'm definitely an older version, but I'm just yeah. saying, like, uh, yeah. I, I'm good when it comes to face matching. Cause you know we all cousins at some point. <laughs> you found her doppelganger. I found her, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. The bathroom's not bad. Okay, okay. The room's not bad. All right, okay. Oh, it comes with a robe. Okay. okay. Here's yeah. my view. <laughs> Just uh, the coast. Not bad. That's so the, the my uh, gorilla pod lost the uh, clippy thing, so I can't oh, use it anymore. Can't do it. <gasps> One thing after the other. to be in Equatorial Guinea. I'd say it kind of feels like being in the Dominican Republic, but it's like pure Africa, not Afro-Caribbean. So just walking down, uh, you know, Hassan the Second Street, Main Street in Malabo, uh, a lot of cool stuff. Crazy thing is the tallest peak is right by the main city. It's right there, Pico Basile. Okay, this is the last place I would have expected to find an embassy for the sovereign military order of Malta. It's, it's legit. So I got my grocery haul, lots of water. I don't know why, every country I go to, they have cheap mortadella. This is 750 frogs, that's like $1.20. You know, some plastic cheese to go with it, make a little protein wrap, you know? I don't know what it is about mortadella. Every country has cheap mortadella. Anyway, good, I'm good to go. Now I gotta work on the USA episode while I'm in Africa. But alas uh, today, Malabo is just the first chapter of this journey. The actual summit would be held in Rio Muni. So I would have to get my last few kicks of this cool town before going back to the airport, getting back on a small jet, heading out to Bata on the mainland, and then taking a bus ride all the way to the new proposed capital, Ciudad de la Paz. On the mainland, Bata. Very few people outside the country have been able to witness this. I must say, like, he may not show a lot of these moments like this, but mm -hmm. he always show clips, and he's always with the people. Yeah. It's like he definitely touchdowns, and he get right into the community. 
Yes, he does. And he, you know, he shared knowledge to the best of his ability when yeah. he's doing his research and things. But he always make a focus on the people. I like yeah. that. And y'all know we love the people and the culture. Facts. Ciudad de La Paz, or at least what is trying to be Ciudad de La Paz. Much of it is still empty and being constructed in the deep heart of the Equator Guinean jungles. For now, most of the roads and buildings are empty and everything is ready to be filled up. Crowning the new city at the edge of the main road, Avenida Justicia, lies the new presidential palace building, an enormous compound that will be used for government administration and the president, of course. I was very lucky to be given supervised permission to get this drone shot and document the building process before the city opens up en masse scale to the public. You have no idea how cool this was. On the south side of the city lies the hotel I would be staying at, the Grand Hotel Jibloho. Built in a style not only to shine glory on the country, but also to highlight all of Africa oh as displayed by the exterior aesthetic. This hotel is essentially a presidential passion project intent on becoming one of, if not the highest ranking hotel in all of Africa, or at least that's what they claim and hope for. It mm -hmm. comes with a domed convention auditorium, a golf course, helipads, pool, spa, gym, oh, nice. luxury cafeterias, and the interior is adorned and embellished with with yes. amazing, beautiful local artwork yes. and statues and carvings. I've been lucky enough to experience a few five-star hotels before from other sponsored trips, but I have to say this may have been the best I've ever experienced so far. Wow. So, this is the hotel. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he's shocked too. What? <laughs> it's nice up in here. Right. There you go, yeah. Oh, oh come sure. on, man. Okay. This is Rihanna. I'm jealous now. Devil got a hat on. Gotta get it, gotta get it. I think I'm lost. <laughs> so with that, I did what I was invited for. I completed my little presentation at the summit. It was fun. I talked about my experience with Geography Now. However, the journey was not over. There was still one last piece to the Equatorial Guinea experience to complete, Annabon Island. In order to go there, though, we would have to get on a government-sanctioned private plane as there are no regular commercial flights and access to the island is incredibly limited, even for locals. Here at the uh, Mbasogo Airport, this is not a very common thing that people get to experience. It's not even open to the public. Very few people get to go out of this airport. That's our flight. And uh, yeah, it's kind of still under construction. They're trying to develop this place, but we're one of the few foreigners that actually get to experience this. As the only part of the country south of the equator, Annabon Island is the most remote, isolated, and least visited part of Equatorial Guinea. The locals told us it had been over half a year since they had seen a single foreigner. Occasionally, government officials and shipping containers might stop by, but all services are infrequent. The locals here actually speak a Portuguese-Spanish Creole called Annabonese, as they actually have more interaction and commerce with their closest neighbor, Sao Tome Island, about 110 miles northeast of them. Aside from the complicated past and incidences that have occurred, there's still this inexplicable sense of vigorous enthusiasm 
orgasm you feel when you step on the island. I did it. I made it here. Fewer mm -hmm. people have had access and seen this place than North Korea. Mm -hmm. And it is quite a place to see. Not far from the main town, San Antonio de Palais, is Pico de Fogo, an extinct volcano with a caldera lake called Lago Masafim. It takes about an hour to hike up there and it is stunning. Going up to Lago Masafim. So we made it. Uh, what? Made it to Lake Masafim. Overall, the only negative takeaway I had from this place was that I didn't have enough time to see enough of it. If I could, I wish I could have spent at least a week here. Gonna be honest, one of the most memorable travels I've ever been on. This, Man. I, there was moments in, in this video where I was starting to get a little bit emotional, like especially when he started showing the people. Okay, yeah. And just, Man, I love seeing how developed Africa is. And of course, now we know that we've been lied to. Now we know. Yeah, right. But let's go back to the beginning of this journey with you all when we were telling y'all the things that we knew Africa to be when we were younger. And now being adults and preparing to come visit the motherland, I am I'm loving what I'm seeing. Yeah. And we are so excited to experience that with you guys. And we know that y'all been asking when we coming, when we coming, coming when the time is right. And we coming this year. Okay, we do, we just have some personal goals that we have to check off our list. Yeah, hundred percent. Fam. Look, I'm speechless behind this whole vlog that he put together. Mm -hmm. Um because for one, though it's not one of the most viewed tourist spots, you know, around, mm -hmm. these people are still loving. They're still showing a yeah. lot, a lot, a lot of love. And the, just the environment alone from the sceneries and the architect, everything is like really pieced together good. The development is coming together well. Mm -hmm. Not too many people get to see this place. Yes. A lot of people probably don't even know about it. So here it is for the first time, and he really showed the inside of it. And I, I'm speechless about it. It's nice. Yes, and we got to see a little glimpse of their rich culture. A hundred percent. Got to go deeper now. Yes, and we're seeing them develop a whole new capital. We've never seen that before anywhere. You know, us. I'm speaking of us. We've Groundwork never seen that real. happen before. So this mm -hmm. is beautiful. This is beautiful. That's all I got to say. You know, it's funny. I started geography now because I wanted to learn about the world, because I wanted to see it. But the weird catch-22 is I spend more time in this studio talking about the world rather than going out to see it. But now that all the country episodes are coming to an end, a chapter is closing, and I feel like now I can really start to do what I want to do, and this is just a taste. And you'll just have to find out. Stay cool, stay tuned. Yes. Yeah, and I feel like we could relate to that 100%. It's right. like you guys see us in our studio a lot, definitely doing a whole lot of culture vids, and um, mm -hmm. we definitely going to be able to, you know, get in there with you guys someday and really understand mm -hmm. your culture, get around, see the sights and the foods, and the, just interact with you all and mm -hmm. have a real moment, you know what yes. I'm saying? Build some real memories. Yes, we ready for it. And yeah. we need some more Geography Now vlogs because that was cool. It was nice. You know, it was nice seeing them outside of the studio. Facts, facts. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks if you like to support the channel that way, as well as our reaction request form is in our description, description box, box below. below. We'll see you soon. Peace. <laughs>